In the previous video, I showed you the Bohr model of the atom, the different energy levels, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and then we talked a little bit about how the Bohr model of the atom relates to the fact that atoms can only absorb or emit photons that contain very specific amounts of energy. In this video, we're actually going to do some calculations related to the um, energy being emitted or absorbed by atoms. Let's draw, let's start by drawing a Bohr model of an atom. So remember we have the nucleus and then around the nucleus we have the first energy level which we call n equals 1 and then we have the next energy level which is called n equals 2 and the next energy level which is called n equals 3 and that continues on and on. Now one thing that I'm not very good about showing in the videos in my drawings is that the gap between the energy levels continues to decrease as it gets further out. So the gap between these two energy levels is bigger then the gap between these two energy levels and the next gap would be even smaller. In general, drawing all these rings is actually not that easy for me, maybe it is for you, um, but chemists have another way of representing the Bohr model of the atom rather than drawing circles upon circles upon circles. We actually draw this in a more graphical form like this, where we have energy increasing on this axis and then what we draw is just say, we're gonna, just going to draw this line, and this line is going to represent the n equals 1 level, which, if you recall, is the innermost level. And then our next line is going to represent the n equals 2 level, which is this guy right here. And it's going to be a lot easier for me to show how these energy levels squeeze closer and closer together when I'm drawing it in this form. So you can see I'm making my gaps between the energy levels smaller and smaller as we go. And in the last video, I actually applied some specific energy amounts to, to these different energy levels. So I said that um, and n equals 1 was 5 joules, if I remember right. And I said that n equals 2 was 10 joules. And then n equals 3 was 18 joules. And I told you these were totally um, not accurate numbers, just numbers that would make it easy for us to think about things quickly with the video. But these numbers are very, very far off from what the actual energy is. So if we continue with this trend, then n equals 4 needs to be even closer in energy, so we'll make that 19 joules. And n equals 5, the gap gets even smaller, so this one, let's say it's 19.5 joules. So now we've assigned some numbers to these energy levels. So the first thing that we're going to think about is the different types of transitions and how they relate to the, the wavelength, the frequency, and also the energy of the photons that are being emitted or absorbed. So we have a question here, which of these following transitions would emit light with the shortest wavelength? And let's use this diagram and also this diagram to help us answer this question, understand this question. So the first scenario that we're looking at is going from n equals 3 to n equals 5. So let's use this, let's, let's, let's start, no, let's use this diagram right here and let's start our photon or our electron off at n equals 5 so it's going to be way up here at the top and this electron is dropping down to n equals 3 so that means it's going it's moving like this so let's think about the energy change that's required for this particular transition in order to go from n equals 5 down to n equals 3 the electron has to start at 19.5 joules and drop itself down to 18, point, or 18 joules. So using the numbers that we're going with here, that transition would require it to emit a photon that is equal to 1.5 joules. That's the energy difference. Let's write that. The difference in energy between those two levels is 1.5. This triangle is the Greek letter delta, which just means difference. So this says the difference in energy is 1.5. And again, we're looking at the difference in the energy level where it started and then where it ended up. What about our next transition? Going from n equals 5 down to n equals 2. So that transition, starting at n equals 5, and we're going down to n equals 2. In order to make that transition, our electron had to start at 19.5 joules and then drop itself down to 10. So what's the transition there? Starting at 19.5, dropping down to 10, that is a 9.5 joule change in energy, which is quite a bit bigger. 
So we've already figured out that this transition emits light with high energy, higher energy than this transition. So what about our next one? Here we're going from n equals 1 to n equals 2. So that would be starting at n equals 1 and moving up to n equals 2. So our electron now is moving in a different direction. If we're starting at n equals 1, we're starting with 5 joules. And to go to n equals 2, we need 10 joules. That process requires us to absorb 5 joules of energy. So this question is asking about emitting, not absorbing, which means we can definitely rule this out. This is absorbing, not emitting. And always, whenever we're going from a low energy up to a high energy, the only way that that's going to be possible is by absorbing, not emitting energy. So we've narrowed it down to two. We know that um, the first transition from three to five is going to give us a photon with 1.5 joules. And the second transition from five to two gives us a photon with 9.5 joules. The question is asking us which one emits light with the shortest wavelength. So to actually put all this information together, we need to use this equation E equals H nu or E equals HC over lambda. These were equations that I showed you a few videos ago when we first talked about photons. These are equations that calculate the energy of a photon from its frequency or the energy of a photon from its wavelength using Planck's constant h, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, and also using the speed of light. So if we know the amount of energy, we can calculate the frequency or the wavelength. This question is asking us specifically about the wavelength, but actually I find it easier to work with this equation right here. If we have low energy photon, like this one right here, that means we're gonna have low frequency. So low energy versus high energy, we'll label those. And again, here I'm just comparing this energy value to this energy value. This one is lower, this one is higher. Low energy value has low frequency. And a high energy value has high frequency. And again, how do I know that? From this equation right here, I know that energy and frequency are directly proportional. So if one if energy is big then frequency is going to be big and if energy is small frequency is going to be small so i know that this transition has lower frequency and this transition has the higher frequency now i don't really want to use this equation right here at all just because i don't quite my brain doesn't quite process fractions as easy so what i want to do next is actually look at this equation c equals lambda nu the equation that i introduced to you quite a few videos ago it shows you the speed of light how the speed of light is calculated by taking the wavelength times the frequency. The speed of light is a constant. So if we have something that has low frequency, low frequency, it needs to have a high wavelength. Low frequency, high wavelength. And uh, likewise, if we have something that has high frequency, it needs to have a low wavelength. Again, you might be asking, how do I know that? Still, this just has to do with math. This is a constant right here. So if this number goes up, in order for C to stay constant, this number has to go down. And vice versa, if this number goes down, in order for C to stay a constant, this number has to go up. Lambda and nu, or frequency and wavelength, are inversely proportional, meaning that if one of them is low, if nu is low, lambda is high. If nu is high, lambda is low. So to answer this question, which has the shortest wavelength, we have figured out that this one right here, in general, high energy always has short wavelength, because remember that high energy, little tiny wavelengths that are able to penetrate your skin. And our answer is this transition right here. This is the one that emits light with the shortest wavelength.